So the first question to ask is, well, why multiple views? Obviously, structure and depth are in fundamentally inherently ambiguous from a single view. Remember, we're projecting from 3D to 2D. When we do that, we lose information. So here's an example of a man pushing the Leaning Tower of Pisa over to make it lean even further. And either he's very large, the building's very small, or there's an ambiguity when you project from 3D to 2D. Or how about, so those of us who grew up in the States were a fan of It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So that might be a picture that looks like this, which would be really a great pumpkin. But of course, what's really going on here is that the location of the camera makes it such that this, this picture just appears like the pumpkin is very large. You know, what's the fundamental problem? Well, the fundamental problem comes per, from perspective projection. Here we have an optical center. All right, and we have several points such as P1 and P2 projecting along the same ray. And of course, because they project along the same ray, they land in the same spot, P1 prime, P2 prime. And so that's where the ambiguity comes from. And the question is how to figure out where P1 and P2 really are. And the trick, of course, is going to be to look at a different camera. So here we have our set of particles, and they're just drawn from some density. And probably, if I were to ask you where is the mode, you'd probably say that it's somewhere around here. Okay? And the goal is for the system to find that on its own. So here we have, again, we have our sample. So let's put down a region, okay? It's called a region of interest. Isn't that a beautiful animation? I did not do that. Now, we're not going to talk about the size of that region just yet or its shape. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. It's going to be a Gaussian. But for now, it's just going to be a circle. So we have this region, and we calculate, okay, of all of the points in that circle, where is the mean that, or the center of mass? And we say, oh, it's not right in the middle. And that difference between them, that's called the mean shift vector. So this is called the mean shift algorithm. Amazing, huh? And so what do you do with the mean shift vector? Well, you shift the mean. And there it goes. Da -da 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 -da. Perfect. OK, what do we do? We do it again. OK, here's where we are. Here is the, the weighted mean of the, the new samples. There's our mean shift vector. What do we do? We shift it again. Ta -da. And we do it one more time. There it is. Oh, we're getting close now. Small mean shift vector, shift. And then finally, guess what? We are in the right spot. Here what we have is a uh, Rubik's Cube looking device, although here it's black and white, so it's just a denuded Rubik's Cube. Uh, and it's been placed on a turntable that's been rotating around this way. And if you take a look at these little uh, patterns on the side, you can see uh, what the rotation is. I'm pretty sure this was done by uh, Rick Selisky because he looked at these gray codes to do the rotation. Now, what's a little bit hard to see is that over here are these little arrows that are showing you the motion. And of course, the motion is greater in the front of the turntable than, say, on the cube because it's closer to you and it's rotating a, a, a further distance. But you'll notice that there are no arrows up here, right, on the white part of the turntable. Now, it's moving exactly the same way as the part of the turntable that has the, the markings on it, but you can't see it. There's no apparent motion because there's no contrast, there's no texture. There's no indication that the pattern is moving. So the optic flow is recovering the apparent motion uh, of objects uh, or points or surfaces. So Harris corners are based on a approximation model and an error model. And here's how we do. Let's assume that we've got an image I and right here, Right? And I is the intensity image. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if I shift that I by a little bit, by a U and a V, and I were to sum up the square over some window, how much error would I get? Okay, that's, that's, that's the game we're going to play. So stepping through that, I is our image intensity. So I of X, Y is just the original image. The U and the V is some small shift. So if I were to pick up my window and move it over a little bit, I would now get some different image, just shifted by a little bit. I subtract them and square them, and then I gonna, I'm going to sum them up over some window. Okay, so the window is going to be some area around some point. So that's written here as uh, W of X, Y. The total value here, E, is sort of for error. You really can think of it as some of the change, where E for error energy. Um, but the idea is that we're going to sum it up 
uh, around that window. So here's, uh, if we were doing a homography, here would be our ransack loop. Select four uh, feature pairs at random. Compute the homography, H, that's the thing that moves it from one to the other. And then what this means is, take a look at the square distance between some point in the image transformed by H and it lands someplace and take a look at its distance from what it claimed was the putative match in the other image and count all the ones that are less than some threshold. Just do that loop for a while and then you keep the one with the largest set of inliers. You then compute, you don't use the old H, you compute the least squares, the best H for that set of inliers and that'll be a much more uh, robust estimate of the transform. Thank you.